Ready? Okay, we're rolling, and here is the Tuesday Thursday class. Everyone say, hey, what is today? Best day ever. Best day ever. Why are we here? Get the tools to build fearless champions. What kind of people are you? Smart, Smart people. people. All right, so as we rock on today, we are going to be moving through chapter four a little bit more. Now, uh, last week as we jumped in, we talked about this chart. Everybody look at the chart. Did you learn the chart? Did you spend some time in the chart with all of the different hormones? Remember, I am going off of a premise that you have a working knowledge of most of the information on this chart, okay? And we also mentioned this word when we were together last Thursday. On page 68 is where I'm jumping in. And we talk about this thing called neuroendocrinology. Which of the two systems am I talking about? The nervous, nervous system, system and the endocrine system. So what if I tell you there's another field of study that we jump into called neuroendocrine immunology? What would that be? Nervous, nervous system, endocrine system, and immunology would be the immune system. So we know that hormones are so critically important to our body that it affects the nervous system, it's the endocrine system, and it even comes into your immune system, especially when we have an athlete that potentially has become catabolic. Remind me what catabolic means in the aspect of muscle building. Breaks down. Breaking down, excellent. Do we want our athletes to be anabolic or catabolic? Anabolic, anabolic. excellent. So when you look a little bit more on page 68, and I mentioned this before, in that right-hand column, we see that testosterone, or one of its derivatives, interacts with almost every tissue in the body. And if you'll remember, remind me when we talked about the beautiful part of the anabolic chain, what were those hormones that led to that domino effect in the anabolic chain? Which was first? Followed by? Growth hormone followed by insulin like -growth, growth factor followed by insulin. insulin. Now, the beautiful part, we are learning that depending on what you're fueling yourself with post-exercise, the insulin decides whether it is going to be used as fuel or stored for future use of fuel in the form of what? fat. And it's all insulin's job to say which way is it going, which is why we've got to be so much better at managing insulin. Not necessarily managing blood sugar, because guess what? If we manage insulin, we will be managing what? Blood sugar. It's so phenomenal. I've been listening to these really cool podcasts. And what this one gentleman is saying that we're finding out about type 2 and type 1 diabetes about five years after the fact when people already have it because we're measuring blood sugar. If we were measuring, God bless you, if we were measuring fasting insulin levels, it would start to show us some changes before fasting blood glucose levels were already jacked up. So we have to be better at telling insulin to store fuel as fuel in the muscle, not fuel as fuel in the fat. And it all depends on the timing and the amount and the ratios that you're putting back in after that workout session. Now, remind me again, what kind of people are you? Smart, smart people. Now, as we move through the journey of being smart people, would it make sense to you that let's just say you did a workout of five sets times five reps at 50% intensity. That would be option one. So now let's say I did four sets times eight reps. Let's say I did this one at 70% intensity. And now let's go to option three. I'm gonna only do three sets, and I'm only gonna do three reps, but it's gonna be at 95% intensity. Now, here's 
the question I have for you. Is each one of these workouts going to possibly produce a different endocrine response from your body? Yes. yes. Why? Talk loud. Go, Roxana. You're putting more energy. So you're saying you're, I'm using different energy systems. Okay, here's what we know. You cannot train the same way every day and expect change. The body will respond to whatever you ask it to. And also, here's what we know. Every single one of our workouts, the goal should be to start the domino of the anabolic chain and believe it or not i want you to tell me which one of these workouts five sets five reps at 50 percent four sets times eight reps at 70 percent or three sets three reps at 95 percent which one of those do you feel would have the largest domino effect as far as muscular strength and muscular hypertrophy? One, two, or three? Three. three. <laughs> <laughs> yes, three actually has the largest effect. Now, there is one other variable that comes into play. We actually see that the time that you allow to rest between sets does come into play as well. We know that different workouts cause a different endocrine response. And here's what we've also learned. We've learned that for people that get up and do those exact four sets, eight reps, 70%, you're eventually going through the motions. And here's what we know. Every day that you age, that you do not create a new stimulus, you're not actually staying the same. You're actually declining in strength and function because the body will respond to whatever you ask it to. So your body, it can get to where that stimulus doesn't create a stimulus for change anymore. That's why you have to be changing it over and over and over again. Hey, and you know what? I just thought of something. We need to do a pause and a shout out right now. Who is missing from the middle of the back row? Kendall. Kendall. Okay, let's pan this around because this is fun. Kendall's not there. Okay, now here's what we know. I got a text message from Kendall. Kendall's wife is having a baby right now. So y'all send a shout out to Kendall. Okay, that was a shout out. So what we'll do is I'm gonna take a pause, okay? And we'll jump back in. Y'all tell Kendall we can't wait to hear about it. Can't wait to hear about it, Kendall. All right.